All right, we should be live. All right, hey guys, everybody that's already in here and people who are still coming in here. Um, we haven't done this before, so hopefully this is going live. If you could see us in here, so let us know in the chat so we know that we are actually live. The little thing says live, so we're going to trust it. Let's see. see. They are live, so that must mean it's working. Shane says, yep, we're not saying what Shane says, but it must be must be working. <laughs> so, <laughs> Hi, everybody. We get to talk about our least favorite topic today, which is ourselves. And it's not a not scripted. We don't have we don't get to edit this. It's just we're going to try our first live out. So thank you to everybody that's joining us here. And it looks like we've got quite a few in here, about 18 people, and they're still coming in. So Ooh, 24. that's awesome. So hello to everybody. Hello, Abby. We got Shane. We got Donna and Steve. We got Bobby in the basement. That's a new name. I don't think I recognize. We got that Brandy. One. Brandy's in here. Sue. Resell the ride. Wolfman's goodies. So a bunch of people. Marsha is in here. Marsh Flowers. AZ Cats. Can you guys hear us all right? We this is the first time we've set this microphone up like this. So hopefully everybody can hear us all right. Hi, Meg. Yep, Meg's in here. All right, so I think we'll get started. We didn't know what to talk about, so we just wrote some things down. Hold on, stop. <laughs> Ken is in the house. We can start now. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Good deal. Thanks, Ken. All right, looks like they, they can hear us so good. Okay, FYI, if I'm looking down at my phone, it's because I'm... Trying to message back to you guys. Are you chewing gum? I am. Guys, she's not good at this. Swallow your gum. No. Spit it out. <laughs> okay, so for, first of all, I think we have like right now three inches. Of snow? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But it's still <laughs> coming. And the worst is supposed to come yet, which is supposed to be wind, which is supposed to pick up tonight all the way into tomorrow. Oh, were you answering this one? Yes. Yeah, we, we've got snow coming down. It's supposed to keep coming down all the way through tomorrow evening. I Donna think. says, leave me alone. You can't see it, but. <laughs> this is supposed to be live here on YouTube and on Facebook at the same time. So I'm not sure how all that's working. I guess we'll find <laughs> out afterwards. We do. It looks like we do have somebody on from Facebook too, so. How do you see that? Yeah, up here. Oh. Cool. Okay. So we're going to give a little bit of background about ourselves for those who are new and haven't necessarily watched our channel a whole lot. If not, yep. shame on you. Um, so we are Grams and Pops Vintage. Corey. Teresa. Um, I don't know what else to say. Well, how do, why do, why are we reselling? We are reselling are we to make money to pay our bills. <laughs> <laughs> way to get right to the bone here no so the honest truth Corey doesn't like to have a boss ken yes we can see from the facebook side so that is working awesome thank you for doing that ken yeah I, that's not untrue i don't like to have a boss and i haven't had a boss other than Teresa since i don't know er, early 2004 2005 is kind of when when we broke out and Started doing our own thing. What? <laughs> Shane had oh. a $20 question. <laughs> Shane. How's it feel to know you're the second best YouTuber? Shut up, Shane. <laughs> How does it feel? It feels good. That's a... <laughs> Inside joke if you don't know it. If you know, you know. That's yeah. how it goes. Yep. In Inside joke that that's yeah that came from outside but we'll leave that one alone yeah, thanks jane for the that. for the super chat that was generous but we're not yeah, we're not going one. there um but yeah back back to origin story i guess we i didn't like working for other people so i started i grew up with parents who always kind of ran their own things and did their own businesses and i just kind of inherited the bug so he is a serial entrepreneur yep and i get bored at jobs I guess I I don't know I I think ADHD is so overused and so over 
subscribe prescribe to people it's a it's almost a cliche to say it but i really do when i get to working on a job i get as good as i can at it and i i make myself the best i can be at the job and then i get really bored with it and i got to do something else so working for yourself you take that option away and you get to change the job every day so that's that's what works for me and it just happened we got good enough at it that i could have teresa come on and do it with me yep so we had an online business we sold shitters we did composting toilets (laughs) yep so we ended up getting out of that and selling that business and then just went into reselling yeah so yeah we well man you go right through them don't you sorry we did we did do we did a lot of things like i started out the first business i started was like a computer repair business so i actually the only thing i did was like remove viruses from computers and reload windows on stupid windows computers for a few years and i actually got hired from that well i got i got poached from that from another company that i was doing work for they wanted me to come be their IT manager. So I did that for a while until I got bored of it. And I got sick of the travel because they mm-hmm. had us jumping all over. So I went back to work for myself. And it just kind of progressed like that until we got to we got to our, our last online e-commerce store. If you haven't heard that story yet, we'll try and keep it short here. But basically, if you've heard of the case Wayfair versus South Dakota or South Dakota versus Wayfair, about, what was it? four, five years ago, three years ago, something. I don't know. South Dakota sued Wayfair, the big e-commerce company, so that they could get it to where any sales Wayfair made within the state of South Dakota, they had to pay sales tax on. They had to collect and pay. They had to collect and pay sales tax at a state level, which was something e-commerce stores didn't have to do before. And... <laughs> <laughs> no, I was... Take... I just saw OnlyFans pop up there. Got distracted. Sorry, <laughs> but yeah, once once the uh, the Wayfair case and South Dakota case went through, South Dakota actually won that, which meant it was a domino effect in every e-commerce platform out there, including the small ones like ours, where we just ran our own Shopify site. We had to start collecting and paying sales tax in every state where we met the the nexus which is a certain amount of sales and or a certain amount of dollars in sales. dollars in sales yep but it got to the point where we were actually successful enough doing that business to where we were hitting nexus in several states um seven or eight we were right on the edge and we would have to start collecting and and processing and paying those taxes in all the different states because at the time they didn't have they didn't have a program where you could just do that. They didn't have any way to do it. So it was up to us to hire a tax accountant in every state because they didn't have anything because it hadn't been done before. Uh, so rather than do that, it was easier for us to sell the business. And that's that's kind of how we got out of that last business. We sold that business to avoid. I mean, basically the the Wayfair versus South Dakota kind of shut us down. We had we were either going to shut down, we were going to hire more staff than we could support, or we were going to sell the business to someone who could handle that. So that's what we did. We sold it, and we had a year's worth of nest egg to kind of sit on. And Ken says, South Dakota ruined it for everyone. You're not wrong, Ken. That case spread like wildfire, and now it's now it's normal in every state. So they definitely kicked the hornet's nest on that one but but yeah i got get to the point where we sold it and we had a year to decide what we were doing next and that's that's when we you know through a series of bad decisions ended up being ebay resellers Mm -hmm. and and we started out once we decided we were going to do it we jumped in with with both feet like we didn't go into it slow nope we sold a car used the money from the car yeah, to purchase thousand. some of our inventory and then went from there. We sold my project car, right? Yes, in 19... <laughs> Let Teresa talk. <laughs> a 1971 <laughs> Dodge Charger. We sold it for it and all the parts that went with it. And it saved room in our, our shop out here. It sat in storage for five years. No, it sat in storage for eight years before we ended up... Um, 
Oh my god. No. <laughs> Max. No, we didn't mention that. We keep that one on the down low. We like to be inspiring, Shane. You're supposed to be talking oh, to talk. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, so we sold the car. We bought our first inventory. Um, we initially, when we first started selling on eBay, we own an escape room and extra business in town here. Um, and so we started out with one of the open rooms right where the, it used to be a lawyer's office part of it. And so we started kind of off with or the entry their way. entryway, their reception area. And we put a bunch of shelves that they had in our, in our building up there and filled that. And pretty soon it was just too much. And we ended up having to, um, move it out here to our to one of our buildings that's insulated and heated hey jane welcome in and yes we are getting that crappy weather over here it is snowing right now yeah we outgrew we took that thousand dollars and we went crazy buying because that's what youtube told us we needed to do and we bought a lot of garbage that wasn't good and we bought some that was pretty good we started it, we built the escape room business during the height of COVID. So we bought the building and we paid buku bucks for the wood to build our axe throwing lanes. Um, yeah, we were paying $12 a two by four at the time. Yep. And so it was um, 2022. We started in June of 2022 and built it completely out and had it opened by September 1st of 2022. Yep. We, when we sold our our e-commerce business, we had our nest egg to get us our salary for a year, but we also had some extra money that was just sitting in a bank. And we we are new to the community. We've only lived here four years, going on five now. So we wanted to take that money out of the bank and not just have it in the bank. We wanted to buy a piece of real estate and start a business locally in the community to help tie us to the community but also to get that money out of the bank and put it in something better than a checking account. So that's why we bought the building the escape rooms at. The escape room was just something we put in there because we said we own this building. It's in a downtown area. It's a cool building. It's like 6,600 square feet per On level. three levels. And it's basement, main level, and upstairs. But we wanted something that would pay all the bills for that building. So it was free to us and it wasn't costing us anything and our investment just stayed there. So we put the escape room in and that's why we have that. <laughs> Sorry, I have to comment on this one. Dana is this serial entrepreneur as well, but she's shutting down her legal cannabis farm. That's interesting. It is not legal in the state of South Dakota. It is medical, medical marijuana mm -hmm. legal, but pretty much anybody can get a card. You just walk into one of the places and tell them that you have anxiety and they'll issue you a card. Well, I, so I think maybe the cannabis shop would make eBay less stressful. No, <laughs> no. Um, Josh is in here. Hey, Josh. We've had a few new people. We have some people from Tennessee. I know we're, I'm horrible at this chat thing. We're trying to keep up with it a little bit, but. I but. am. I've been reading them. We just aren't necessarily putting them up on there. So, yep. um, so that that's how the escape room came to be. I mean, it was an investment to tie ourselves into the community and we needed something that would pay for that building. And that's basically what it does. It pays for that building yep. it and all the me, utilities. It gives me my yep. adult or adult slash child interaction, my social person, a chance to actually talk to people um, just because I, I can't just stay with him all day. I could, but... <laughs> <laughs> there's only so much you can talk about so question i could spend all day every day with her she just doesn't see it the same she is a social person and she needs that outside activity i do i do so as I'm far as people so uh happy heart treasures asked so the question on the escape room do you come up with the puzzles and games yourself how do you find the time to create it all so we do typically work friday saturday sunday in the office um at the escape room building and as far as the rooms, um, the first three rooms we ever built, we bought the plans for and modified them for our own use. Yeah. Because like the one is a, a, it's called Hacked. It's a bomb themed room. You have to disarm a bomb. Um, they had it set up in somebody's apartment building or sure. apartment. 
Not sure if that's Ryan or Paul, but hey guys, thanks for stopping in. And so we changed it just to be in somebody's garage. So we actually have a room that has a full-on garage door in it. Um, but the latest room that we created, which was grounded, which is our Christmas themed room, we actually built that from the ground up. My daughter and I, with Corey's help on the technical side of it, um, and yeah, the veto power and the veto power. <laughs> let's tell that story. Here's how an escape room gets designed by us. The girls usually start going through, we, we all kind of brainstorm a theme that we want to do like the Christmas room and the girls start brainstorming these magical puzzles and the game flow. And when they're all done, they bring it to me and they say, make all this magic stuff that came out of our head real, make it happen. And then I have to start shooting down puzzles and being the guy that, as as Steve would say, poo-poos everything because they dream up something like touch a button and a waterfall happens and you're in a rafting world and <laughs> butterflies shoot out of the wall. And then sometimes you just can't make that stuff happen. So we come up with a happy medium mm -hmm. where... Maybe it's spitballs instead of butterflies, and we we run with it. Yep. But, yeah, so our latest room, and we do have another room that we have the plans drawn out for. Um, it's just a matter of getting down there and sheetrocking, yep. drywall, yeah. drywall, taping, mudding, getting the rest of it laid out, painting, and all that stuff. Um, so, do that one. Okay. So, as a new eBay reseller, I would not wait to list expensive items. There are scammers out there, but you can kind of gauge them once they come up. Um, one of the first, one of the very first things that we listed was something from our house. It was a $280. Well, one of the Harmony remotes. Harmony yeah. remote that I, he had gotten me for Christmas a few years, quite a few years before we listed it. We, we never just used never it. used it. Um, so well, we had a, we had a TV and, and kind of like a surround sound and we had a fireplace with a remote and we were thinking if we had one remote, we could just run everything. Well, it's it's a lot less one ring to rule them all when you get a remote yep. that it didn't connect to half the stuff and it didn't work. And frankly, we were just not smart enough to run it. So we put it back in a box. We yep. never used it. And they do sell those little Logitech Harmony remotes. They sell well. So we yep. got rid of so it. So even if you have high priced items, just and also if you get somebody with a zero, that's the thing that makes me giggle. I'm in some groups and if you get people that are buying stuff with zero feedback, don't instantly just write them off. Like you're getting people that are coming new to eBay to buy a lot of the times. And so if they pay, great, well, package it, ship it. The cool thing is eBay does have seller protections. So as long as you're following the rules on, on your sale, if you're not doing anything off of eBay and you're following eBay's policies as a seller, they're, they're going to side with you in most cases you have very little risk as a seller. Now there are some buyers who will pull some scams and stuff, but it's it's pretty difficult to to get something over on somebody as a buyer or a seller on eBay. They do a really good job of protecting both parties. I mean, they they walk a tightrope with that, but they do I mean, we haven't really had much where we have lost anything from being scammed by a seller. No. Like even from the very beginning, even the ones that try to pull something, usually eBay just comes in and says, okay, we're going to give both parties their money back and you guys can go your way. Well, the one that so, I think tried to was they ordered, I think it was four packs of our 1988 Tops football cards that we sell for 150 bucks a pop. And they paid 150 bucks a pop for them, I think. And then they got them. And then magically we got a dispute from their credit card company saying that they yeah. didn't recognize it. And we did just not long ago get good positive stuff from it and they ended up finding in our favor so we didn't have to give up anything um but being a top rated seller too i don't think they would have i think they would have just let us have our money as well so here's one bobby asked what point do you decide to have an ebay store for us it was an easy decision it was probably halfway through week two of when we said we we're going to sell on ebay we went and bought all that stuff and we started listing and we passed our listing our 250 abilities. they give you 250 items and so many dollars that you're allowed to list per month and when we hit that time for a store i mean it was as simple as that for yeah us. otherwise if you don't get a store um then you end up no because that's for anybody isn't it if you go over your 250 they start charging you that and anybody. you can ask for your well whatever uh, your limit is currently yeah yeah, yeah. 
But that's when that's when we did it. When we hit our limits and we needed, we had two choices. We could either stop listing, which from a business perspective didn't seem to make sense, or we could pay for a store, which seemed a lot better. I think I have a shadow. Ken says our the, lights look. I know. Great. I think I have a shadow from the the microphone. But... We're yeah, we're struggling with lighting in here, but we're we're starting to get it. <laughs> Let's see. What else? Does anybody have any questions besides the ones that have They've asked? They've been asking questions. I know, but more <laughs> questions that makes it easier for me to talk about. Um, so yeah, that the. the the escape room side is is being used more as Teresa's outlet for social, for her social interactions, but we do get tied to it on the weekends, which is one of the reasons if you've watched our videos that we only source on Thursdays. That's why Friday, Saturday, Sunday is when we run the escape room. We pull up Rita's. Um. Rita says, I picked up a bag of Barbie clothes and accessories this morning for $20. I opened the bag and immediately felt overwhelmed. What kind of organization do you do to research these? So I have kind of changed my strategy on doing Barbie clothes because not all of them are worth everything, are worth a lot of money um, or worth listing individually now. So I actually have started doing um, Google image. And so I will lay it down. I will take a photo with Google image to see if it comes up. If it pops up right away and I can do my research and it finds it, um, then I will go out and I will list it. As far as if it's something that doesn't come up right away, I have actually started lotting them together. So I will do um, a lot of Barbie wedding dresses or a lot right. of Barbie, you know, summer dresses and just selling them that way. Otherwise, it used to take me a long time to go through clothes. Um, if you ask me that same question, I'd say burn them. Like, I wouldn't list them. And if I did, I would list them in a lot like you bought them. Just to, like, that's that's why working together between the two of us, we do pretty good. Because that, I would not, I wouldn't deal with that. I, I just can't sit down and do that tedious stuff. No. And I've, I've, it, I do it with the shoes, too. Because finding out which shoes go to what Barbie and whatever oh, cool. is, hold on. Okay, you can do that one. What's your favorite item to sell? Go ahead. We had this discussion yesterday yeah. because we were debating how to answer it. So I, I already know what mine is. Oop, can you Barbies. See it? Barbies and brats, dolls, basically. Barbies, brats, dolls, Littlest Pet Shop, um, that kind I of stuff. I don't have one. And if I had to have one, I would get bored with it. Like, I know that. So... And, and Corey's least thing is I have actually made him start doing some of it because he doesn't like to clean stuff. He likes to buy stuff. <laughs> that one. He likes to buy stuff, but he doesn't like to clean it. So the other day, actually, so a really funny story, he was cleaning stuff or he was going through and helping me list. Thank you, Wolfman, for the, for the super chat. Yes. Um, he was going through helping me list and he pulled out some tester thing and it was all dirty. And he got frustrated. And he's like, I'm not listing this because it's dirty. Yeah, and, and we actually talk about that on the podcast that comes out tomorrow with Ken, the Reseller Clickbait podcast. That was part of our discussion. That is something that I frustrate myself with because I'll go to try and list and everything I pick up is a project and it just drives me crazy. Like I won't list that kind of stuff and I know. I did make myself go back and clean that and then list it, but it's, it is it is physically painful for he me did he that. went through and he was like i'm not listing this and he set it aside i had and then a little he... temper tantrum and then fixed it he did <laughs> it was almost as if he was laying on the ground kicking and stomping yeah but i know did notice later when i was because i was off listing in our other booth um that he had actually grabbed it picked it wiped it off and listed it i had to like it I mean, everybody's allowed to have a little temper, temper tantrum now and then. You just got to self-adjust, and I did. And if anybody's been watching our videos, and we talk about Corey not... I haven't answered that one yet. But Corey not um, dealing with his fishing reels that he listed, that he picked up like two summers ago. Got half of them done. Well, he did them. He listed his in lots, and I went through and I pulled out a few of them that I looked up, and they were worth like 25 30 bucks. And I did go in and listed them and we have sold all four of them that I listed for yeah. anywhere from 25 to 30 bucks. Yeah, hers the ones she listed sold, the ones I listed on one sold, but 
Okay. I'm getting behind here. I, but I got to answer Donna's question. So at what point did Teresa leave go. the corporate world? In your opinion, when is the best point to jump in with both of you full-time self-employed as resellers? I'll say hi to a few people here. Hey, okay. Roman and, and Alex, I see you're both in here. So thanks for stopping in. Go ahead. Okay. So um, I'm an accountant by trade. I have an accounting degree, a, ba a bachelor's degree in accounting. Um, I used to work in corporate accounting. Um, in 2017, when we were running our online business for composting toilets, Corey finally pestered me, <coughs> excuse me, enough and convinced me to um, leave my corporate job, come work at home with him, which I love because I answered the phones. I got to talk to people on the phone all the time. Um, and it was great. But as far as jumping in both feet, do what seems right to you. I wouldn't tell anybody just go for it because everybody has different bills. Everybody has different expenses that they're going to have to pay um, and all of that stuff. So I I wouldn't even know what to tell them. Yeah. Here's Roman. Roman, thank you very much. Chucky did need breakfast. Okay, hold on though. Hold on though. <laughs> Roman, I have to explain. There's no H in Teresa. Thank you for your money. But there's no way in Teresa. <laughs> thank, you, thank you for your money. <laughs> you spelled my name wrong. Leave that guy alone. No, that, okay. Yeah, with Teresa's leaving the corporate job, that was that was difficult. It took me almost five years to convince her, and we really had to just have a logical discussion about what it takes to pay all the bills and put things on paper and show that we had, you know, over a year of making way more. Like I was making more than both of us at our old jobs were making. Even if I had to pay insurance out of pocket, mm -hmm. I was still making more than any two people. So once we showed her that and showed her we had a good history of it, like over a year of doing it consistently, then it was easier for her to let go and step out of the office. But I think the biggest thing was the social interaction. I mean, not having the water cooler to go gossip at with the rest of the hens. Mm -hmm. was the hardest thing for her to let go of. Our accounting department at the company I worked for, I worked for a, a, I don't know if it's a Fortune 500. I don't know what they were, but um, our accounting department was primarily women. So, yep. you know, women cackle, women gas gossip. We all, we were all really good friends. I don't talk to many of them now anymore, hardly, but. No, but it seems like every time we go sourcing or head into the I bigger do. town where we <laughs> used to work, she knows somebody everywhere we go. And it's so annoying because she calls him over and then you got to have the people thing going on. Yep. And, and then he talk. walks away. So I, yeah, I just leave. <laughs> it's she knows somebody everywhere we go. It's crazy. Okay. Go back up to your starred questions. Okay. So here's. Chucky here. does not need breakfast either, by the way. Gloria, thank you for subscribing. And she asks where we source. We source summertime. We are 100% garage sales. We have traveled up to two hours away to go to citywide garage sales. Not 100%, but 90. 90% 90 of our, in the summer, 90% of our um, our sourcing is garage sales. We do bulk up. We do bulk and get a death pile so that we can make it through the winter. Um, in the winter, some of them, um, we do a couple different things. We've tried estate sales. They're not great. Um, we've bought storage, storage auctions. Um, so we bought storage units, which is really good. Picker. Um, we do try Goodwill every, every once in a while. We'll get something good at the Goodwill, but we, we struggle with that. Facebook I have been marketplace has been really good for us since yep. we've started. We started, well, kind of. well, we've started really looking at marketplace and Craigslist because we're trying to pay up a little more and buy bigger collections. Mm -hmm. And that has been really good to us, with the exception of this whole transformer, transformer debacle. But I'm, we're trying really hard not to let it that derail us from doing it because I do think buying the bigger bulk items, the the larger collections, I do think that's the direction we want to go. So yep. we just, I mean, we're learning some expensive lessons right now with that. Should I tell you about the? Remember the one we were discussing the other day that I found on Craigslist, the dolls. What? I sent you the image. The anime oh, doll. I don't know. Have he's you guys ever he's seen He's creating these? me a list to tell me what he has. Did, they make <laughs> these anime dolls that are like basically naked. And no, they're, they're anatomically. Naked. Yeah. Like they're porn dolls. They're, and not there's a all whole of listing them. of them on Facebook Marketplace. No, Craigslist. Or Craigslist. Craigslist. They're, they actually sell really well. And they're really expensive. But my 
goodness. Like, Some of them I don't know if I, I would have, have to, to like do. Yeah, as I grab my, <laughs> I would have, have to censor because they're really they're really cool and they do sell and some of them do sell for a lot of money. Here you want to um, answer this one? Why does Teresa never have on a GMP swag yet? Corey's always rips. I do in the videos because Corey is is a businessman and Teresa. The only thing he has on today is his hat because he wears a hat all the time. The only thing. Wait. No shirt. Yeah, but the hat's enough. I gotta look and see what shirt I got on. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out, Shane. I could always use the backup. Let's see here. What do we what do we got oh. here? Do you guys ever get cards oh. graded? I thought I was buying Pokemon, but they were Yu-Gi-Oh. I'd like to know how I decided if I should get Okay. We have we have. We have. We did get football cards graded, which we did not go the expensive route. We did not go PSA. We went SGC. SGC. They've still sold. We only have, I think, like five five of them left that we had graded the rest of them have all sold um pokemon cards i will tell you we don't buy pokemon cards we bought yeah we did we bought fake pokemon yes cards. so that was our first counterfeit or fake problem was actually pokemon cards luckily we only had ten dollars in the whole tote of cards and we started comping them out and a lot of them comped out at like a hundred plus dollars per card and then we found out they were fake. So we do have videos on that. If you guys want to go take a peek, there are somewhere on there. There is a whole thing of the Pokemon cards and us going through them, telling them how they're fake or not. Okay. Um, but as far as grading football cards and stuff like that, if if we were buying more cards today, we we wouldn't. No. We wouldn't do it again. Like we're not going to break even on the ones we graded. Maybe break even, but that that's about it. It wasn't worth it. Okay. At least for us. We're trying to stay up on the chat. Let's see. First, I want to say thank you very much to oh. Paul and Ryan. Over oh. here. Now I have to make another comment. So <laughs> not only is there lots of H's in there, but Corey is C-O-R-Y. There's no E in Corey. Oh, we got both of us spelled wrong. That's, <laughs> that's all right. Okay. I got to know who it is, though. Is it it's Ryan not, or is it Paul? Oh, okay. Right. Paul okay. usually comes on as Paul, so I figured it probably was, but... Lives are really easy. You just let somebody that knows how to do them start them, and then you just go Ooh, into it. You? I, didn't, I, I didn't know till today. So th thank you, Ryan, okay, for that. that one real quick. Which of this one? Okay. How do you get GMP swag? Oh, you go to gramsandpopsvintage.com. Well, don't do that yet. Actually, how about first, we give away one? Yeah. Why don't we give it away? If it, if you guys want to go, well, don't go there yet. Let's see if I can figure out how to do a giveaway. Anybody know how to do like the? The giveaway on StreamYard. Ken does. Let's see. I'll figure it out here real quick. Um, For the one that's telling us about Goodwill shoes, I don't ever look at the Goodwill shoes at our place because, at our Goodwills, because they're not, they're not usually good. And I don't know crap about shoes. Sorry for the quiet. I'm trying to keep up on the, thing while pops does whatever he's doing <laughs> so we're gonna do a drawing but what we'll do is we'll do a drawing and then if you win go to grams at pops vintage.com and go to the store there's a hat and two different kinds of shirt on there and if you win the drawing pick which one you want and tell us what size and we'll actually send you one so let's see i just got to figure out how to do this drawing okay i'm going to answer a question while you should look it up on oh no never mind look it up on your phone um so I have to answer this one. Where did it go? Where's Alicia? Okay. If you ever watched Flippin' Fantastic Podcast, I was on there quite a while ago, and we were discussing how Pops and I met. We met, um, our we're, we graduated the same year, um, and we met at a street dance in the town that he grew up in. I was there. Why because do we got to tell this story? I was there because I had family that lives there. Um, they worked at what they called the state training school, which was a, a juvenile delinquent prison type area. Um, but I used to hang out with Corey's sister back in the day. And we dated for a little while while he was at boot camp and back and everything. Um, and then I left and he dumped me. And I kept hanging out with his sister. And so I'd come to his house and he, he tells me he did it officially, but 
He did. He hid under his bed or in his bedroom and locked the door so that I wouldn't know he was there. Alicia, I think you knew this, and I think she you did know it. He to, says, to... "I know this one." Okay. Nope. You're taking that off screen. No more Alicia. No more Alicia questions. <laughs> you guys picking on me here? Okay. I think I did figure Amy's... out how to do it. Which one? Um, it's down farther. I think. Oh, you might have to scroll. Oh yeah, we're behind. Amy's. <laughs> it's the little icon with the, the person peeping out of the bed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hi from Iowa. Glenda, hopefully you're not getting the crap that we're getting. We got somebody in here from Ontario, Canada. Yeah, she answered. Uh, there's another one up there, too. Yeah, we're not very good at keeping up on these. She said, actually, if you're in... Uh, it was basket noodles. She said, actually, if you're in Ontario, Canada... You're the best sourcing in North America. Heaps of this warehouses is... of inventory that are for dirt cheap pennies on the dollar. Scott wants to see my smooth moves. I don't think anybody wants to oh, see that, sorry. Scott. No. That's that is good. the how we met story. We met. And oh, no, that isn't all the how we met. So he hid whatever. Then I joined the military. And I'm still I still hiding. I went off to boot camp and then I went to um, Fort Huachuca, Arizona for my military training for my MOS. And then and then I magically got a hold of his phone number from his sister. This was years, like two years later after we dated. We dated in 96 or 90. Hold on. 94. 94. And this was in 96. Yes. Yeah. So two years later, she calls me out of the blue and says, hey, I know you're in North Carolina. I'm heading to New York. Can I stop by and see you for a week or whatever? Two weeks. Two so weeks. I agreed. And I may have been drinking. And I agreed. A lot. <laughs> and by the end of that two weeks, I mean, the, the short part is by the end of that two weeks. Two days before yep. I was supposed to fly out to go to my permanent duty station at Fort Drum, New York. We sat down at the table while we were playing Skiboo, Skipbo, however you want to say it. We played that almost every night. Yep. Um, and he said, so... How do you feel about getting married? Yeah. Eh, sure. So we went to the courthouse. We make we make very quick decisions. <laughs> we went to the courthouse um, and got married the next day. I have no clue who the people were that stood up for us and I witnessed know. us. We lived with I knew one. Them. Yeah, I knew them at the time. I think I had been staying with the one person for, for like a week or two at that point and asked them if they would mind witnessing our our wedding vows or whatever at yep. the courthouse so justice of the peace yeah it was it and was then, a very quick decision yep we got married at the justice of the peace and two hours later i flew out to my permanent duty station two weeks later Corey showed up at my permanent duty station With and we pick up full of stuff and a friend <laughs> and a friend i brought a friend <laughs> we had a roommate for the first uh, six seven months that we yep. were married roommates suck if you didn't know Let's so, see. what else was there? Let's see. Would you recommend buying storage units? I would. You would? I I, talk, I feel like I'm talking a lot now. I won't let you. Anyways. <laughs> no, <go ahead. laughs> so, I would. Um, I We have gotten to be very picky on the units that we bought because, like, the first one that we bought, it wasn't a horrible unit. Um, But it wasn't exactly organized either. Like, they had just pushed stuff in there. Um, the second and third one that we bought, they were both somewhat organized. Um, actually, the third one that we bought was really organized, and it has made us... How does we that paid... answer the question? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I got off on a sidetrack. Here's how I would answer that question. Would I, would I recommend you buy storage units? If you have the space. If, if you can afford the risk, because... Because storage units are strictly... I mean, they're a gamble. That's all they are. You're, you're buying a mystery box at a large scale. And you could kind of see in them... And hedge your bets a little bit in terms of can I see something that's worth some money and try and do it that way. But they really are buying a giant mystery box. We've been very lucky with storage units. We have made really good money on all of ours. And they are a ton of work. So if, consider that. Can you process that much inventory, good and bad? Can you get rid of mattresses and furniture and things like yep. that? And then can you afford to take the risk? I think that's the only way to decide if you should be doing that or not. If you have an acreage like we do, we have an easy way to get rid of crappy furniture, mattresses. Excuse me. Crappy fur furniture, mattresses, and that kind of stuff. Because we have a big open area um, as part of our driveway. 
And we, as soon as our burn ban, we're currently in a burn ban in a red flag area. Oh, I got all the hiccups there, the burpees. Oh, Virginia. Thanks for stopping in. Um, We're going to set it all out in the middle of there and light it on fire. Amy says if they have the space, I okay. would buy lots of units. Let's go back to our giveaway. We got to do oh, the giveaway. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's do the giveaway. Um, let's see. What do you want them to type? Hashtag something. Hashtag bed hiding. That's too, that's too much. <laughs> hashtag live. Yep. Do, do hashtag live. I'll put mine in here so you can see it. Hashtag live. And we'll do a drawing. We'll see. Oh, I did it twice, didn't I? Somebody pointed that out to me. Oh, we got. We, we got have 83, 83 people live in our chat. 87 with Facebook. Oh. So that's awesome. Thank you guys for stopping in. So hashtag live. We'll give you guys some time to get that done here. Let me go load this side so it's working. Okay, I'm trying to catch up. How long do you get? How long do they give you to clean out units after you buy? Um, Jane asked that question. Typically, it's usually 72 hours um, from the date of when you go in and pay for it. Usually, you have to pay for it the day that you win it. Um, we actually didn't take that long, and the the one storage unit that we yeah. did have. Um, our big, big one, they were really nice. And they were like, if it takes you a little bit longer, just let us know. Um, because they did have a lot of furniture in there. And it was just us two old people that were in there trying here's to clean a, it out. Here's a pro tip. If you're working with a partner like I am, try to make sure they're not buying storage units when you're unaware of it. And you're in the middle of an oncoming snowstorm and you have 48 hours to clean it out. Because <laughs> that's what she did for the last two units we bought. She bought them. And I didn't know she bought them. And then we had 48 hours to empty them in a snowstorm. Scroll down until you see the one from Sticky Picker. Scroll. Hold on. Let's see. Here's Well, here's one quick. Do we ever buy pallets from Amazon or Target? Nope. We, we would look at um, Target and that type of thing, but I refuse to buy. We will not, I don't think we'll ever go shop in a like Amazon bins or an Amazon would buy an Amazon pallet just because we just watched a lady. Um, do you remember what her name is? Desert, desert, desert reseller, desert reseller yeah, or something like that. Well, we knew too, because we had some experience with this too. But if you're buying at the Amazon bin stores and you see a lot of people doing that, where they put everything in kind of like the Goodwill bins, and then you go buy $5 a piece or $7 a piece mm -hmm. or a $1 a piece on the last day or whatever. A lot of that inventory is coming from Amazon rejects. And a lot of the times why they're rejects and you see multiple items of the same item in those stores is because Amazon removed them for being counterfeits. Yep. And if but you buy those, them. and if you buy those and you resell them on eBay and, and you get caught selling counterfeits, you can actually end up in a lawsuit. If, if you get a chance, go watch Desert Resellers. She just had this happen to her for selling yep. like a $20. It was a life alert, life saving thing. Yeah. And, and she ended up in a court case over it. And they just, they basically just buy one of your units to prove it's fake. And then they serve you via email yep. and they try the case in Chicago or somewhere. Yep. And you really are just at their mercy. She did get lucky. She um, had to settle. She did yep. settle and it ended up only costing her like 250 bucks, yep. which was plus the lawyer. extremely lucky, plus her lawyer's fees. But it could have cost her a lot of money. So we're, we're way more cautious than we used to be with that stuff. Counterfeits are... It's scary. And and all that stuff is going to end up at a garage sale someday when somebody buys it. So more and more, it's going to become a problem if these lawyers keep getting away with that. Yep. Hopefully somebody steps up to help protect the sellers a little bit. Okay. Where do you go to find storage units to buy? That's I have cool. four websites that I check constantly. Um, Bid 13 is one. That's one that we have bought. Um, we have bought one. Our very first storage unit we bought off Bid 13. Yep. Um storageauctions.com is the one that we bought our most recent two storage units from. Um, I also do check storageauctions.net and storagetreasures.com. Those are the four websites that I know of off the top of my head that I go to. Let's see. Can I, I want to share my screen here. Giveaway tool at the top. Okay. We're going to go ahead and draw this. I'm going to collect We've got 38 entries, so if you haven't if you haven't yet, go ahead and and 
put your hashtag live in there. And I'm going to draw again in, in just a second. Um, and we'll get that done. Okay. We'll do a few of these. So you'll have a couple of chances. And then we're going to give away the number one reselling tool that we have. Yep. We're going to give away something we probably shouldn't. It's our business decision maker. But we're going to we're going to give that away today, too. So okay. as I'm scrolling while you're doing that, and I don't know if you can find the comments, but somebody said for international sales, do you still need to fill out the customs form or is eBay handling all of that now? Um, so as far if you enroll in the eBay international shipping program, the EIS, um, eBay handles all of that. You ship to a location here in the States. Um, I think there's a couple. Most of the items for us go to Illinois and they handle everything on the other side of that. Um, so it is really nice. We ship quite a bit international. Um, I did just finish filling out my entire, as far as the States, I have shipped, we have shipped to every state in the U S now. Yeah. Um, and I do keep adding countries. I did just add China, um, to my, my map that I have, that I map out all the different countries that I sell that we've sold to yeah. so far. So the short answer to that is, yeah, you don't have to, you don't have to do anything because you're actually selling and shipping to right here in the US, eBay is actually the one making the the sell and the shipment overseas. So they're using a fulfillment warehouse. So yep. ev everything on your side is basically just shipping right here to the US. Okay, can we answer one more before we go to our thing? Do this one. It is all in your head. <laughs> I... <laughs> it's all in her head. It's all. Because I list at 15, she lists at no, he, he lists. No, he will list something at $13.20. Or twenty two dollars. I usually do it at a round number. I just list every. I list everything at either ninety nine, ninety five, or forty nine. There That's is it. there is some psychology behind it. If you study e commerce and and stuff and pricing and and retail, there is some psychology behind dropping from that twenty dollar point to the nineteen ninety nine, and so there have been studies on that. There are some psychological benefits to being that penny cheaper. What those all are, you'd have to look into it deeper. But I just price it at where I think it should be. She has to put it at like 99 or 95 every time because it's just. And if I'm the one that's something... making, if we're putting them in drafts yeah. and I'm the one that has to make them active, she'll I change do change them. them to 99. Yeah, she'll change them. I know she's changing. <laughs> okay, let's do this drawing. We Ooh, have 41. 41. Who do Better we not be you. Oh, I hope I don't win. If we do, we'll draw again. Mike Except. Seller. Okay, Mike. So I'll write it down. Gramsandpopsvintage.com. Go to that website. There's a shop section. There's four things on there. There's a hat. There's two different t-shirts and there's stickers. Pick what you want. Tell us the size. And then let's see. How do we... You can contact us on Instagram or just send gramsandpopsvintage at gmail.com. Send us a message. We'll verify it's you and then we'll get that sent out to you. So congrats, eBay removes Mike. 88 million counterfeit items last year. That's 230,000 a day. Yeah, it's crazy. <gasps> Can you win Ooh. if you're old AF behind Corey? No, that was a gift from, from our kids who also don't like us very much. So they give us stuff like that. Okay. So hold I'm on. Stop sharing that. Okay. There go. So there's one in here from Donna. Scroll down. Keep going. This one. Oh, it's from Steve, not Donna. Click on it. Did you order on uh, Life of a Midwest? Uh, what is that? I have a shiny new book. I just got delivered in the mail yesterday with your face on it. It's. Is there a money there back a guarantee? money back guarantee if it is entertaining? <laughs> <laughs> well, there is if you got the free ebook version or something, but no. Do we have a copy I, of it here? I believe somewhere in the book it actually says if it isn't entertaining, you can at least put it in your bathroom, use it for paper. Because we did write that book during the toilet paper shortage of COVID. So the book he's talking about is actually this one. And it's just like a like a daily journal throughout COVID from here on the farm. And it is available on, on Amazon if anybody wanted to get that. Maybe we'll give one of them away today, too, if we have time. It's not good. Like, if you win that, it's not good. But you could use it to hold up a table leg or something. Oh, our daughter's in here. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. 
Hold on, I'm looking for other <laughs> <laughs> I did scroll through them. I didn't see anything. Okay. Congrats, congrats. Do we have snow shovels? Yes, we have snow shovels. <laughs> right there. We have one of our children in here. This is our oldest. Give away my precious gift to you. No, I, we can't give that away. That's that's from the kids. So thank you, Danny, for being in here and tell the baby hi. Hopefully she's feeling better. She has an ear infection. I don't know if she's talking about this, the book, but I'm gonna I'm gonna assume she is, and I'm gonna say thank you, Marsha, for loving my book even when it's unlovable. Okay, so real quick before we go into anything else, we do have. A, a new announcement for Planes to Profit. We have decided we are doing one next year in 2025. So there is going to be a, a second Planes to Profit. We have started kind of building funds and stuff for that. And in that effort, we wanted to do a raffle. We will, we took the banner, and by we, I mean strictly her, took the banner from this year and we cut it up. And we made like Ikea style bags out of it. And then for the handles, we used our lanyards from the actual event. To make those bags and we wanted to raffle those off apparently running a raffle online is gambling and it's not something you're allowed to do nope. so we, we didn't do that instead what we did is we took all the video from the event the stuff we didn't publish on youtube like the breakout sessions and things like that and we built them into the back end of the planes to profit website we're going to charge ten dollars for access to that so you can get in and watch all the content that didn't get published but by paying that ten dollars, you're also being entered into our raffle or drawing. Yep. That and, was our way around not yep. getting and, in trouble. And basically what that is, we're gonna take all that money and we're gonna put that into an account and we're gonna use that to start making deposits and building the 2025 event. So that's not coming to us, it's going straight to the planes to profit yep. account. And when you do that, you're gonna be entered to win one of we're going to give away two bags. Yep. So there'll be two drawings for the bags made out of the banner and the lanyards and sticker packs. And we're also going to do a drawing for two free tickets to the 2025 event. And if if you're in that, you're going to get notification 30 days ahead of everyone else that the tickets are for sale. We have decided to keep it down, down to just 50 to 60 tickets, I think. So we're going to keep it small. We're not going to try and grow the event. We're just going to try and make it better with a small group. So you'll get a month notice of the tickets and you'll have a month to buy them before anybody else does. So that's kind of what that gets you. Planestoprofit.com. If you guys want to, to get in on that, you can grab that there. So I'll throw a link in here and then we'll move on. I got to answer a question. Yes, Planes to Profit will probably be, it will be in Omaha again. Um, not guaranteeing it's the same hotel, um, not guaranteeing we're going to the same bin, the same stores or whatnot, but yeah. yes, it will be in Omaha again. Yeah, it'll be a different event. Right now, tentatively at least, we have decided to do it in the Omaha area again. And it's probably going to be the end of March is what we're looking at right now. That may all change, but we're looking at the end of March for a date so that we can get past the worry about the weather <laughs> stuff. No, Shane, you must buy your own plane ticket. <laughs> Shane, if I could buy everybody a ticket, I would. Let's see. Was just, was driving and just got home. Love the idea. Glad you all decided planes of profit again in 2025. All right. Well, I hope to see you again there, Josh. Yes. We like Casey. Make sure you bring her with. <laughs> Yeah, Teresa says Josh could stay home. Just bring Casey. So. No, he, Josh can come too. Okay, so that's it. Now, as far as what's going on right now, well, what's going on at the farm right now? We have a few exciting things happening at the farm. We're missing our chickens. I have left all chores to do. <laughs> <laughs> we have a rooster. All seven or eight of our other chickens have disappeared. Yep. We went to do chores the other day and all of our chickens are gone. I think there's a mink or something must have taken them or a raccoons or <laughs> something. But all the chickens except one big white rooster is in there all by himself now. But all the rest of the chickens are gone. Yep. We so have we have very little chores to do in the morning. Unless they all come back. There is a possibility that they all wandered off 
and they're roosted at the neighbor's house. I, they don't have anywhere to roost them. Like they'd have to go through a tree grove and, and like, I don't know, probably 10 acres across his yard to get over to his barn. But there is a possibility they're roosting over there. We don't have a coyote. We have so lots of coyotes. Well, I know, there. but I haven't <laughs> seen one. I go out there. I'm the one that goes out and collects the eggs at night and closes them in. Um, I have some possum friends. I don't, I don't really mess with them. They just we go in there. We've got a lot of there. raccoons that go out there. We've got raccoons on the trail cams out there quite often. So there's there's a little bit of everything. And there's a little dugout back there. So it could be, could be coyotes, could be mink, could be a neighbor's dog. They could be at the neighbor's. Like, we really don't mm -hmm. know where they're at. They're just gone. But it doesn't look like anything was, like, killed in the barn. But on, no a, feathers. on a positive note, it is going to, after this storm, so, you know, we're in the middle of a snowstorm. Um, it is about time to start getting new chickens if, when it warms up, I I'm can not, get baby chicks. I'm not excited about that because it means more work for me, but oh, we I could just take the eggs chickens. on the counter and go hatch them. No, some, no, no, <laughs> no. Nope. So. so yes, we are missing our chickens. They have run away or they have gotten eaten. Gotcha, Mike. Thank you. Um, yeah. Well, we have a cat out there too that's got, that's having. I think she's already had the baby somewhere. She's she's big and fat, and she was ready to drop kittens, and now she's been gone for two days. So we got JoJo Last, is JoJo our cat. She is she is one of the first litters that was hatched here <laughs> when we moved in. You don't there were cats. I know there were eight <laughs> there were eight cats here when we moved in. The people that lived here really liked their cats. Um, they're just so, barn cats. Yeah, they're all outdoor cats, but they did actually build them two heated houses. So there are two heated dog houses out there. They're not heated anymore. No, um, that they were living in. Um, so, yeah, sorry. Now, Jojo, we had we had two two kittens in that litter that we named. We gave away most of them, mm -hmm. but it was the the Tiger King era during COVID. So yeah, we, we named one of them. They we had a boy and a girl that looked at identical. We named them Carol and and Joe, after Carol Baskin and Joe the Tiger King. Ended up we are very bad at at telling what sexes the cats are when they're that tiny. So they were Joe was actually a girl and Carol was actually a boy. So we switched their name to Carlos and Jojo. Yep, Carlos is now actually like Tito or something like that. Yep, it went to one of our kids' friends. So we got stuck with Jojo and she just produces kittens every Last year. Last year she had three litters of cats. Every time we say let's go catch her up and go get her spayed, we pick her she's up pregnant. and she's pregnant. And they won't spay her while so. she's pregnant. What? Snake? Yeah. He, Shane's going to catch a turtle today? That's awesome. He did already rescue one today. Now he's going oh, to pet to get the food. A, okay. Well, it's better than a snake. I could get behind rescuing some turtles. Snakes freak me out. If you didn't know, Shane, Shane actually does a, what do they call it, a herping channel? <laughs> the herp. Not to be herping confused with, <laughs> not to be confused with LARPing. He's not out there with swords. He's actually, it's called herping. He's out there catching snakes and, and stuff And he doesn't like have herpes. Oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I don't if he assume. does, but that's what I think of when I hear his channel. Poor Shane. <laughs> <laughs> so, also, if you don't know already, we are in the middle of a snowstorm. We are actually in a winter weather watch. Actually, winter to, weather warning watch. Something supposed to get twelve to fourteen inches today, which is great. Yep, between tomorrow and today and tomorrow, we're supposed to get lots of snow. Um, but on a positive note, we are going to go to our first garage sale April sixth. There is the is garage that? sale in Hartford. Oh, this is our this is our church sale. Yeah. So if if you watch our if if you've been on the channel for a while, our very first garage sale last last summer. Was was this big church sale? We actually met uh, Matt Thrifter Sifter at this sale. Yep. It was our very first sale after the winter last year. Yep. That same sale is coming up. It's a little later this year. It's on April sixth, so we shouldn't have snow to contend with. When we drove there last year, we drove there through a snowstorm, and we did okay there. It's a pretty good sized church sale, so we're getting ready to go to that on April sixth, and that should kind of crack the ice on opening all the garage sales up like usually after that sale the sales start coming pretty quick and we get back into the into the groove of going sourcing again because we haven't we haven't really sourced mm -hmm. like officially gone sourcing well we did hit that one garage sale but they were all overpriced so we didn't yeah. 
yeah we haven't anything. gone out on our thursday mm -hmm. to hit like 20 30 sales nope. in months like we've we kind of shut down sourcing and we still don't need to source we still have plenty of stuff so mm -hmm. and we are we are finally um oh amy's taking off see Bye. <laughs> We are finally starting to get rid of some of our big stuff from our storage units. We've started to get pretty aggressive on marketplace listing furniture, and we sold some big stuff over. Teresa sold some big stuff over there this this week. Oh, uh, sorry, I was reading comments. I wasn't <laughs> listening to you. <laughs> um, so this week I had to prove pops wrong. So we've been trying oh, to list yeah. all of our furniture out of our storage unit. Um, we currently only have one couch set left, which is a couch and a love seat and an ottoman. Um, and then we have a an adjustable bed and mattress, adjustable frame and mattress. Um, the things I sold this week, I actually had a guy drive two hours to come get nightstands because he couldn't. <laughs> Josh, that is the problem. <laughs> that Josh. is me. That is, that me. is the problem. Um, but. Now you threw me off track. Anyway, so I had a guy message me saying that he was going to drive, and I asked him where he was coming from, and he was coming from somewhere in Minnesota. It was a two, I Google mapped it. It was a two-hour drive. Um, he came and picked up a set of nightstands. They were 50 bucks for two black nightstands. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I sold was an Echorn's Stressless Chair. It is a chair in an ottoman. Um, originally they go for like $23 to $2,600 brand new. I did see some listed on eBay for, you know, the nine to a thousand, but I wasn't going to list that on there. So pops, I said, well, what do you think I should list it for? He's like, like four, three, $400. I didn't think she was going to get, I actually, when she told me what she did list it for, I was like, you're never going to sell it for that. Yeah. So I sold a stressless chair for $600. Like I said, the guy drove two hours to come get it and two nightstands. And then we sold two, like a stacking footstool. Mm -hmm. And so a, the, shoe ca a shoe rack. A shoe rack. So the furniture, the big stuff in that, that other building we have out there is starting to go away. So we're starting to make room for this year's sourcing, which is good. We need to, yep. we need to get on it and really empty that building. <laughs> so Ryan asks if... Plains Profit's going to be the same time next year. It will probably be... A little later. Almost a month later. It'll probably be end of March is what we're looking at. Facebook Marketplace. Let's see. What is... Facebook Marketplace oh. is as bad for you as it is for me. People asking if it's available and say yes and then never... Yeah, there's there's a lot of that. Not so terrible here. It, no, but it has some. been. It has been. So when they send me that message and say, is it available? And I say yes and I don't hear from them for a little while. I message them back like half hour, 45 minutes later. And I'll be like, do you have questions? And the one lady actually answered and said, yes, I do. I've sent it to my husband, whatever. But a lot of them just ignore you or ghost you. Or lately, for some reason, people are really shopping on Marketplace. And I've gotten some that are from, like, for a, a headboard that we have listed. And the person messaged me. You okay? Got chills there. The person messaged <laughs> me and they were like, okay, I'm, I'm interested in this, la, la, la. And then pretty soon I get a message back from them, like, an hour later saying, oh, I didn't realize you were in Madison, South Dakota. I'm in Omaha. Yeah, we get that a lot. Like, yeah, and it said we always have it say Madison in there to see where we're at. But yeah, that's we do get some of that. But we also have had recently we've had people from like Fargo, North Dakota, shopping on our Facebook Marketplace and ask us to ship small items, and we we did that. We did. We didn't make the sale through Marketplace. That's where they found us, and then we just talked in Messenger. And lined mm -hmm. it up, and I took the payment via PayPal, and and we shipped it to him, and that worked great. Hold on, hi Ladonna. Oh, she's Bayou Bella is in here. Yep, hi Ladonna. How's Bayou Bell. Yeah, so Facebook Marketplace, I struggle with. Like, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Big things, yes, I, I do source on there some, but not a whole lot. Haley says she knows Facebook Marketplace kind of all over the place with location. I've noticed that too. I have trouble with Marketplace because when I go to search, my filtering on the iPhone especially is horrible. But Teresa can search it and she can narrow it down by time listed and location just fine on her mm -hmm. Android phone. 
So I think it depends even on device, what you're searching, where you're searching. But yeah, for me, on, on my iPhone and stuff, location is horrible. I never know what I'm looking at until I dig into the item. On Facebook Marketplace too, lately, I have noticed that there have been a lot of people when they post their stuff, I just giggle because it's like going to a garage sale and people have printed off pieces of paper that say this is what it sells for on eBay. I have noticed a lot of people are going and adding screenshots from like Amazon or eBay and mm -hmm. stuff like that into their listing. And I don't think what people don't realize is they don't they do kind of have the reach that Facebook Marketplace does, but it's not as big. And so putting those prices on there just it it doesn't help you sell it and you're not going to sell it locally for um what you would on eBay. Can you not help it here? Now I'm I have to agree though. Team Android, I was always Team Android. The only reason I have an iPhone is because I was an IT person and I got sick of working on Windows computers. So when I got out of the field, I bought a Mac. Never had to format one, never had to work on it. It just works. Hmm. And because I started doing content, being able to transfer data back and forth from my iPhone to the computer is so much easier on an Apple. So Ooh. that's the only reason I actually do the the Apple products. Carter's Retro Quest is in here. He says, hey, everyone. Hey, Carter's Retro Quest. Blah, 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 blah. That's too many words to say at once. Hey, Will. Thanks for joining us. I know you got FYI, I know you guys by your names, like your usernames. I don't know you like Pops does with your your actual name. So Excellent. on a future show, would we walk them through international shipping? Yeah, we could. I'm sure we could do that. We could actually give this the the short and sweet version here. Yeah. I think on eBay now you don't even have to do anything. I think they um, turn it on by default. They do. After you hit it, they do. But you only get access to it after a certain amount of sales yeah. or dollar amount. Um, we know that because my sister has started selling on eBay. Um, and she's she's like LaDonna. She sells glass. She loves picking up um, blue glass and that type of stuff. And so she wanted to know how she went about finding the glass or how to ship internationally. And I told her where to go. And it said it was on. And so she messaged eBay and they just told her that she had to wait for a certain amount of sales or whatever it was. So Yeah, so I think I think they're starting to more or less turn on just just automatically. So really once you qualify for it, I think it just goes on. If not, it's it's a single click. You just turn it on and say allow international shipping. And the only time you even have to think about it, because it makes no difference to you. You're just shipping to like Chicago or wherever the hub is. Mm -hmm. The only difference to you is when you're listing certain items, like if you list pocket knives or or Pause. or goodbye basket noodle. Oh, yep. Yeah. See a basket noodle. But yeah, if you're listing like pocket knives or or say the cordless phones, the old 2.4 gigahertz cordless phones, you got to make sure you turn those off on international shipping because you're not allowed to sell those internationally. Mm -hmm. But other than that, we really don't even notice it's there. Okay, cool. I I hope I said that right. Cool, cool. Antique and Collectibles asks us, have you heard of the scavenger hunt west of Mitchell, 150 miles of flea market, rummage sales, etc. Yeah. the end of June? Yes, we have. It's the one that goes through South Dakota. Scavenger's Journey. Yeah, it's the one that goes from Mitchell, South Dakota to, I think it goes west to, like, out to Rapid, while well, that area. Good news, bad news. Now... Now I've heard of it. I don't know if I had heard of it before. I think I was aware there was one. Bad news is from Mitchell West to Rapid City, there's three houses. So, <laughs> yes, it's 150 miles, but that doesn't include very they many They said places. it's a good sourcing <laughs> spot for them. So, uh, Curiosity, we where, used to live over there. where are you located at? Yeah, we used to live. Actually, I grew up over by the Plankington White Lake area, which is like 30 miles west of Mitchell. Yep, and I grew up um, Mitchell and south of Mitchell by like 30 miles. So, um, Matt's going to hide now. See you, Matt. Thanks for stopping in. Um, you want to do another giveaway? Yeah, let's before do before anybody else let's leaves. Let's do another. Oh, oh he's some... from... hey, you're yeah. like right around the corner from us. Yeah, you're not far from us. That's cool. Okay, we're gonna do another giveaway. What do we want to use for a word? Mm, hashtag future. Future. Yep. How We're going to F U T U R E. <laughs> Hashtag okay. future. F U T U R E. We're going to give away. 
Oh, I was going to do more merch. No, we're going to give away this. Okay, we're going to give away a decision-making tool you can use. It's our best business decision-making tool. So put in hashtag future. Would y'all like to know what it is? Here's what we're going to give away. The magic eight ball. It works. So anytime you have a real question, you just ask this. And it's going to tell you. So is somebody is somebody going to win this? It's going to use it. What does it say? As I see it, yes. As I see it, yes. So that's what's on the line here. <laughs> giving Give away me. Transformers. No, we're not giving away Transformers. <laughs> oh, he's the one that had the little boy that was fascinated oh, by you. Yes. That, yeah, we did, meet, we did meet them he there. He was such a sweet boy. I was I think they were buying stuff that day too, so I hope they did really good that day. Yep, he is right. We did beat them out at a sale. That was a community sale here in town. Yes, yep. they were here in Madison. Yep, we definitely remember. I don't know if we had stickers that day. I hope we did. Hi Terry. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Sorry, I'm trying to catch as they come in. So while we're waiting for the giveaway tool. Let's see, I'm gonna get this ready here. We're doing hashtag future. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta look at the I gotta look at the magic eight ball. Go back to the screen. Oh, what are we asking the eight ball? <laughs> oh, where'd it go? Um scroll down. No, oh, the Ken one. Question for the eight ball. Will Ken win the drawing? Well, let's see. Mystery yes, we had is stickers. good. Well, if you're in town for the community sale here oh, in town again, sorry. we'll probably be at it again this year. It says my reply is no. Ken, this is not looking good, buddy. <laughs> okay, let's let's go back over here and look here. We're we'll gonna start collecting comments. Ooh, All right, we got, we got 30 of them so far. We got 30 people in there. So hashtag future if you would like to win the eight ball. I can't guarantee it'll improve your business, but it'll probably make more sound decisions than we do. Hack and how in the heck do you balance? Hashtag unsung. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. <laughs> okay, go to this one. Let's see. Okay, so the best piece of answering your question, how in the heck do you balance being a parent, spouse, and business owner? I'm losing my mind, Trash, pa trashy panda. Um, one, we are empty nesters. We do not have kids at home anymore. Our daughter, our youngest does come home and stay on the weekends because she works with us um, every once in a while. She and we lost our weekend. minds a long time ago. So, it doesn't, so it doesn't I think you register. just have to like maybe wait until after they go to bed to list. I've heard a lot of people say that, that they don't do, you know, once your kids go to bed, then that's when you go out and do your work and your shipping and all that. Um, but yeah. That's, the one the one piece of ours is we're together doing the business so it's you know there is no balancing you have to find ways to make the time you're spending together more mm -hmm. fun like we enjoy sourcing together mm -hmm. like that's when we go list to, with each other we want to kill each other so you have to find things in your business that you can make fun for each other like our our sourcing days those are kind of like date nights almost so we enjoy that part of it but but yeah like if we had to go out and source or list all day together with each other there's like somebody's having peanut butter and jelly for supper that night it isn't going to be good for us so we tend to do that more separate and on a positive note if amy was still in here guess what i have a crock pot meal going today we do we have pork cutlets pork cutlets today so I can make her mad and I'm still going to eat good tonight. That's what she's saying. No, I don't have to let you have any of it. <laughs> Let's see. I want to share a screen over here. A giveaway tool. And we're going to do a drawing. We got 30 in here. So we're going to go we ahead. We do fun of each other, not necessarily fun for each other. <laughs> Let's see who wins this one. So this is for the Magic 8 Ball. Wouldn't that be funny if... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I wanted. Bobby in the basement. Awesome. So congrats, Bobby. Instagram, Grand the Pops Vintage, or Facebook. email, or Facebook. Just hit me up one way or the other and give me your contact information. And then we'll communicate with you here after the show and get an address for you and stuff. 
Okay, I'll stop sharing that. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Look at that one. <laughs> no, the one for Jean. Jean Jeannie. Yep, that know. one. Maybe. I can't see that. <laughs> Number one rule. Get an unneedy husband. <laughs> oh, I thought it said unsteady. <laughs> nope, I like that. I like that. Get an unneedy husband. Where do you find those? I don't know. I'll give you one that's needy <laughs> if anybody wants one. <laughs> It's gonna say where you find it. We're all needy. What's hey, this? Rod's here picking and punching. What's this thing up in the corner here? See that? I don't know. Those might be. I don't know. All right, we got a weird thing up on our screen. You're not seeing it on your screen, right? Oh yeah, I don't know. No, I don't okay. see it on mine. It's just on our screen. It just covers my whole face. So. Yeah, I don't know where that came from, but it isn't affecting anything. So we'll roll. You can go with back it. through screen. So yeah, hi Rod. You see picking and punching's in here. Thanks for stopping in. <laughs> we shenanigans. I'm past the return period. Past the <laughs> adding longer than thirty days already. I've had mine for almost thirty years, so yep. I I might it might be time to trade them in for a new model. <laughs> we do our first live and <laughs> We end up having to go sourcing. The next spouses. giveaway is Pops. No. Who wants you? <laughs> no. You, nobody wants that. Okay. Well, we're at an hour and 15 minutes. What else do we want to talk about? We Does still anybody else have any questions? Here. We do. We have like 85 people They've still been in here. lots of questions. I know. This is cool. We didn't expect this many people to show up, guys. We weren't sure anybody was going to show up. So, so I do have an update. So with the Transformers thing. Oh, we, yeah. um, we I'll that. give you just a quick update. So a stupid camera keeps moving. We reached out to I went and dropped off paperwork at the uh, the clerk of courts. Um, that was all of our documentation showing, you know, what what we have. Um, and then I asked them how long it takes for <laughs> the old bottle. how long it takes for them to serve him. And they said they didn't know for sure, but usually it's only a few days. They said you could reach out to the um, the sheriff's office, the civil division of the sheriff's office, and find out if they've served him yet. So I did call them, and they have not served him yet. I guess yep. that's a big district for the the civil officer that delivers those. So he has not delivered it yet, but yeah, so we so I can call as, back. As far as he's aware, we've just kind of decided to take the law, so we haven't done anything. Because he hasn't even been served yet, which is... Which is cool. I mean, that's that's fine by me because he still has till April 30th, no matter when they serve him. Yep. He still has till April 30th to make his case once he is served. So that's all coming. We will update you guys when we hear more. But basically, that's all we know now. At this point, you've heard everything we know up until just, just recently we found out he hasn't been served yet. Yep. So, And he will still be served by the sheriff when it's time. So before I put up this question, I have to tell you. So I went to an estate sale with my daughter the other day because Pops was homesick. Um, and so I went and hung out with my daughter at this big, they call it a, oh, I don't even remember, friends, friends something garage sale friends for babies. Friends family's garage sale or something. No, it's friends, I don't remember. But anyway, so it's a big, huge garage sale. I did mark it down. Okay. Um, and so we went to an estate sale afterwards. And it's funny when you go to an estate sale, or a garage sale, and all you hear is, hey, I know that voice. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lady there that, she bought some stuff from us on Facebook, and she um, actually, just yes, between just between friends. friends. There you go. My daughter put it in there. Um, that, I lost, that they know you by your voice, and they don't necessarily know you by sight, so... Okay, so what made you decide to do a YouTube channel? For me, it was part of the plan from the beginning. When we decided let's do reselling on eBay. When that decision was made internally and we were gonna sell the car, get the seed money and go full bore, we decided that we didn't know how big, we didn't know how much we could make on eBay. But we knew it, when we do businesses, I guess to roll back a little bit, if we do any business between the two of us and we start a new business, when it hits $5,000 a month in profit, that's the day we consider it a business. Everything up until the point $5, where five thousand dollars a day or five thousand dollars a month, month. <laughs> a month, a day. We'd be that's rich. Kind of, no, when it hits five thousand dollars a month in profit, that's when we say, okay, this is a real business, and we treat it that way. Everything up until that point is just growing a business or bootstrapping a business. So we never consider them a business till that point. When we started to do this, we figured we could probably get to the five thousand dollars a month 
on eBay, but we weren't sure where the ceiling was past that. So we wanted a second side to do an additional 5,000, which we considered YouTube. Mm -hmm. So we said we were going to do 5,000 on eBay, 5,000 on YouTube each month. And that was going to mm -hmm. be the business we were in. We found out very quickly that the YouTube side of that was a pipe dream. That doesn't happen. Well, it does. It can happen. But that's like 5000 a month on YouTube at the moment, at least what it looks like to us, is kind of like the odds that I'm going to make the NBA. It's just not going to happen. But eBay had a much higher ceiling than we expected it as well. Mm -hmm. So we could do way better than 5000 a month on eBay. So it ended up working out. But we actually did also end up really enjoying the YouTube side. Yeah. How about you? I do like the YouTube side. I do like just the the videos that were produced, but I don't like it when Pops record when Pops is editing them or when Corey is editing them because all I hear is again. <laughs> He's always making comments about stuff I've done oh, on the look. video or said. I know. She was I saw that. It. She was Yeah, she yeah. started working part-time for the um one of the estate sale companies um that we go to. Um, I did tell her it's not my favorite one, but. Well, Grams gets honed in on the merch and she forgets I'm at the estate sale sometimes. I do. So don't feel bad. Even garage sales, I do. Because he'll be like, are you done yet? I've already gone here through here like three times. No, I'm not done yet. Rod's pulling for us to make it to the NBA. Me too, Rod. But I, I don't know. I'm going to have to start some better mm -hmm. training because we haven't put that much focus into it. We're actually just having fun with it. So... Um, well, we had this happen to us too at a garage sale last year. Um, we did. it ended up being the lady. We actually ended up meeting that lady again this year because we bought a whole bunch of bubble wrap from her. Um, but her and her son were at a garage sale and she's like, she did the same thing though. It wasn't necessarily by sight. It was by voice. She also yeah. said, Hey, I know that voice. So it's really weird that people know your voice. Let's see, Bobby, this is a, this is a good question. When we first started. We, we did horrible at this. When we still sell things every once in a while that we listed those first few months we were selling. And we're like, who the heck listed this? We're going to lose our butt on shipping because we didn't do right. And it's usually, yeah, it's usually me that listed it. Now we're, we're pretty good at judging. Like we measure everything. We know what size it is yep. and what size boxes we have. And then we make a determination how much of those boxes weigh, how much packing is it going to take. And we take a guess. Mm -hmm. That's honestly what we do. We've just gotten, the more you do it, the better at guessing you get. And, and we if, try to guess. High. We try to guess heavy. It, so, that I mean, that's that's how we do it. It's just an educated guess. And the more you do it, the the more, the closer those guesses get. Yep. And the one, the one nice thing now, too, is that eBay does the cubic rate for ground advantage. So, if you do have a bigger box that doesn't weigh that much or that weighs a ton... It's going to go by cubic versus. You know, I suppose if you were talking to someone who's good at business, they would probably tell you to actually put the the packing materials in the box and stuff on a scale and and just do the measurement. But we we decided what six months ago, eight months ago we were gonna we were gonna list five hundred dollars a day. Mm -hmm. That's that's just what we do seven days a week, five hundred dollars a day. That's how much Close we list. To it anyway. So that we could try to sell five hundred dollars a day. And the only way to do that and maintain it is to be listing that much. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do. And if we're going to do it at that scale, we don't have time to weigh and measure every box. We have to get really good at estimating, which is why we do it the way we do. Just yep. because of the scale we do it at. Yep. And like like Ken says, you know, you make sure you weigh the item. The weight to me is a huge deal. Um, as well as yeah. the we dimensions. If it's a small item. yeah, for smaller, you know, smaller packages weighing the item you're going to get closer um for bigger items they do take into account like usps they do add additional weight or additional fees for over a certain um certain measurement um so if it's a bigger item just make sure that you add a couple inches or whatever just to make sure that yeah, you're we, covered that yeah when you start getting into large stuff like big blow molds and stuff like that be way more precise like like we could have really aided on a few of those when we were packing them up, the difference between a 36 inch blow mold and a 42 inch blow mold could be $150. Mm -hmm. Like it, they start jumping that drastic when you start getting into those bigger packages. So the bigger they are, take the time and get it right for anything less than that. 
under 70 pounds, well, I would say under 50 pounds and under two foot by two foot, get really good at guessing. Let's see. With your $500 a day listing goal, do you actually make that much a day? Average. So yeah. not necessarily every day. Like yesterday was a really sad day. We had Today two is days. a really sad day. We had two days in a row that were sub $200 a day, which is terrible. But yep. we never we never look at we never daily. look at it daily because if you look at eBay daily, you will go into a fit of depression and stop. We look at it on a 30 and 90 day basis. And when we average out our 30 and 90 days, yes, we do we do hit those five hundred dollar a day goals on average. Not always, but, mm -mm. but usually we hit that, we average that, and sometimes slightly above that, and we're trying to grow it. But day to day, there are days when we hit there was a we hit what two days ago we hit eighty six dollars. Which is our whole day. Maybe. It was horrible. Well, I just but had we my also had a sixteen hundred dollar day last week. So as we're talking, I just had my second sale of the day. So what was that? It was my the little doll? weird dolls that yeah. came in a box so yeah we do we do on average we hit that so somebody says you can always um you can no. always refund um you can always refund what oh they're talking do... about shipping if you go over on shipping you can the only the only problem with that if you guess too heavy if you don't start getting good at guessing is you will you'll lower your sales. Like if people go on there and you're $12 more expensive on your shipping than every other person selling mm -hmm. it, you're you're not going to make the sale unless you have something that's very one off that that the shipping price really doesn't matter because mm -hmm. you're one of the only few people with it. So you do have to get good enough to stay competitive, I guess. Yes. What's up Easy Pickens? Yep, Easy Pickens. We're pickin'. just hanging. You Glad doing? you could come hang with us. All right. You want to give a, give away another piece of merch? Sure. Let's do that. We're going to give away another piece of merch off of our website. So again, whoever wins this, just go to gramsandpopsvintage.com. Look at the the items that are on there. There's two different styles of t-shirt. There's hats and there's stickers. You pick what you want. You tell us the size and we will ship it to you. So what do you want to do for the word here? Hashtag snow. Hashtag snow. So that's all we're going to do. Hashtag snow. I don't know why I'm the one doing the typing because I can't spell. I just about spell snow Don't hit snow it again. Wrong. You do it twice. Every no, I posted oh. to Facebook. <laughs> I'm like, you do it twice every time. So if you if you want if you want to enter the drawing, hashtag snow will get you in. I'll go start over here. Did I ever quit sharing that window? I did. Good. Yes. Okay. Hashtag snow. This is cool. I like the the like drawing tool on here. Streamyard so makes I it have, easy. I have to go back to I know I'm gonna say it wrong. Cole's antique and collectibles. Um, how's your son doing with sales? Like, is he still into the whole eBay reselling, the reselling in general? He it's not a question on there. I was just curious. Cause I know, like I said, he was he was a pretty enthusiastic kid. Um and so it was just fun to see somebody that young really get into it. And, you know, he had his mom out there shopping with him. And so they, Corey asked him what his favorite favorite find of the day was. And he said, Corey. Yeah, I had to go sit in the car <laughs> after that. I, he broke me. <laughs> so hopefully he's doing good. Hopefully he's still enjoying it. Um, hopefully we'll get to see him again at sales this summer. Yeah, keep him at it. It seemed like he was excited to do that stuff, which is really cool. I wish our kids were interested at that age. I don't I don't know if any of ours are necessary. I know they have kind of the entrepreneur spirit. Yep. Like I could see that in in at least two of the three. I think I can see that a little bit. I think it's still very young yet, which is good. It should be. <laughs> Ken, why did you pick a snow word for why this? Why did you pick a swear word? word? <laughs> I can send some to you. Yeah, we can box it up. We'll send it out. We should have plenty. I think when I get done plowing the driveway, I'm going to officially take the snow plow off the tractor, though. I think I'm getting rid of it. Whatever whatever comes now, we're just going to drive through. I'm done. We'll clean the driveway one more time and finish her up for the year. The pickup will make it through. My car should make it through. Yeah, we'll we take have the truck if inches. we have to. <laughs> All right, so we got snow. Let me, let me share the screen here. Look at 
Oh, it went down. There was 91. 95 people still in here? Nine, oh, 95. There was so 96. 95 people still in at the moment. So if you guys want to get in on the drawing for free merch, it's hashtag snow in the chat. Ooh. Hi, Glenda. I haven't seen you post, but welcome. Marsha, I'll definitely bag up some and I'll send it down to you. You can send it with the t-shirt I'm going to win. <laughs> so optimistic, Ken. So optimistic. Thinking about moving back to KC, then I remembered snow and stay in Mississippi. Kansas no. City is not. I mean, we we know like South where where Steve and Donna are down by Lincoln. If you go from where we're at to where they're at, it's a ten. Degree it's a ten change. degrees change. They're always ten degrees warmer than us, pretty much at any time. I they're, have to say hi. Oh, hi, Zena. So yeah, they're just going that far. They're always ten degrees warmer. I suppose going further south than that, it keeps jumping. So KC is. Like that's pretty good weather. KC right doesn't there. probably get as much snow as we do. Like nowhere near as much snow as we do. Hopefully they at least know how to drive down there. Because in North Carolina, South Carolina, that area, when they get snow, nobody knows how to drive. Yeah, look at 47 degrees. Yeah, it's not that. It's not that here, Steve. <laughs> Where are we at? We're, We're at, at 33. 30. I'm at 33. I don't know if you can see. 33. It's hard for me to nope. line up with that camera for some reason. I'm at 31. Okay. We are going to... Well, KC is also... They get a bit more of the Tornado Alley than we do. So. Yep. You didn't say... You didn't say hi to us, Grams. Who is Who it? it? Devin. Devin22. Hi, guys. Yeah. Thanks for Sorry. joining us. I'm trying to keep up, but sometimes I just can't keep... No, they don't. Okay. We are... We're going to do this drawing here. So this is for merch off our website. So whoever wins this, again, just go to gramsandpopsvintage.com. Go to the shop tab. Pick what you like. Melissa, Melissa Joy. Joy. Pick what you like and contact us on Instagram, Facebook, or email, gramsandpopsvintage at gmail. And if it is a t-shirt, make sure you give us your size. Yep. Let's see. Stop sharing. Yeah, I don't know why that little white thing's up in the corner. Awesome. We're, no, we're not moving south, Donna. I'm sorry. I can't live in Nebraska. We mostly do flea markets. What does he say? They do flea markets in the summer around the area. Did eBay a little bit, found the flea markets more engaging. He loves, yeah, he loves selling, just hates setting up and taking it out. I don't blame him on that. I don't well, let us know what... Those aren't great for me either. <laughs> let us know some of the, the flea markets and stuff that you do. Um, do you do the one, the what is it called? Black entertain black black market, black something. The one that used to be Benson's the black market. <laughs> it used to be called Benson's That's Flea Market in Sioux Falls. <laughs> it used to be called Benson's Flea Market, but the company changed it and they do um Yeah, they do it's called it's a flea market, but they, they changed the name on it for some reason. So Yeah, I'm not sure. We, did, we haven't been to many flea markets. That's one thing we haven't had a lot of experience in is going to the flea markets. It'd be, it'd be nice to try it. There's just not a lot. Well, maybe there is a lot around here. We just don't know about it. Melissa Joy, in with your shirt, I will send you some snow. It's at 77 <laughs> well, degrees here, bags. and she don't ever see snow. You're going to get a bag of water. There you go. Do that last one. Terry, thank you for stopping in. I saw your comment earlier. I'm just trying to keep up on them here. So thank you. And thank you for showing up. All right. Do you want to do a... T uh, we haven't done any stickers. All right. We'll do... We'll do one more. We'll do... We'll do a drawing for some stickers. So let's do hashtag stickers. Hashtag stickers is what you type in. We're going to do this drawing, and then I think we'll let you guys get out of here. I can't believe we've kept this many people in here for this long already. I don't know why you guys don't have anything better to do on Sunday, but we oh. really appreciate it. While they're doing that. Oh, nope, not that one. Have you ever thought about selling at a flea market setting? Nope. I didn't even know there was <laughs> one around here, so it's not a thought we've really had. I don't, I don't know if I would... I think if I was going to do that, I would just have a garage sale and really market it well. But we oh, might. They do Prairie Village in Mar in August. Maybe I'll have to check on those dates and we'll come out and we'll see them. Yeah, let us let us know if you guys are going to be at Prairie Village. We'll stop out there. That's I mean, we live in that same town. so It's like 
eight miles away. We've from never us. been out to that one either. Nope. So hashtag sticker. Let me go switch this up. Do do hashtag sticker stickers hashtag stickers. Okay, we got 27. Make sure if you're putting it in there, it's stickers with an S at the end. Yep, add your stickers, add an S, add an S, add an S. And they are this one here. This is the one you'll be getting. We'll send you a couple out if you win. Yeah, I don't know why it doesn't focus. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. that one, but less blurry. Yeah. I just have to make one comment for sure. Cole, make sure you do your stickers. You have just sticker. Hey, Len is in here. Hey, Lynn, how's it going? There you go. Good job. Let's see. Okay, let's go see how many. Let me share the screen here with you guys. Whoops, that's not what I want. Yeah, I don't know how all you guys that go live all the time, I don't know how you manage all these comments and drawings and stuff. Like, this is a lot. You guys are way better at this than I am. But we're we're muddling through it, so it's working. <laughs> Virginia, you gotta click on hers. We're still here because we love your advice, advice and, and your sparkling, sparkling personalities. personalities. Well, we know somebody's day drinking. Cordy. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize, Virginia. <laughs> All right, we got thirty-three people in here. We're gonna go ahead and do the drawing. Let's see who gets the stickers. I'm just waiting for it to land on us once. Oh, Sue. I'm guessing Sue already has stickers, but we're going to send you some more. Sue, let me know if you if you do have those stickers. Let's see. What do we just do? Okay, it switched back out. So <laughs> Sue got that one. Deb him. It's Sue, better than you, can, you know how to get a hold of us. Facebook, email, or Instagram, however you want. We'll I get like those out egg. to you. <laughs> Hamster buns. Hamster buns. <laughs> Oops. You do not. You Yay. don't have our stickers yet? How does Sue not have our stickers? Sue's been watching for a long time. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad you won something then. All right. I think... Sorry, Ken. You're, you're a loser yeah, today. Ken didn't win anything today, did he? <laughs> now I feel bad. Ken has my stickers, though. I know that. We could send him back his autographed picture. So I think that is that is it. Yes, congratulations to all the winners today. I think we're going to get out of here and try to do something productive today. This was our first live, and we actually had a lot of fun doing it. So we may do more. We'll see how YouTube treats it, if YouTube hates us for doing it. I apologize for my bubble blowing. Yep. Next time, I'll make sure Grams doesn't bring gum to the show. We're amamateurs. <laughs> so, you just got to keep it real. I think, I think Keeping that's it, it real. right? That's it. All right. We're going to let you guys get out of here. So thank you. Thank you. And we will see you next time. I just gave us back to 